you probably know by now that Twitter has open sourced their recommendation algorithm. So let's talk about it. We will understand kind of an overview of how do tweets from all around the world end up on your home feed. We won't go into much details on how each component works. Uh, maybe I'll make some separate videos for that. This video is just for an overview. All right, so the goal of the whole recommendation pipeline is to scour out tweets you want to see from a pool of millions of tweets. The way they do this is they first collect some candidate tweets, figure out which tweets you will like in particular, and then they rank those tweets according to your preference. Your home feed is created with these tweets and you know in middle there are some ads, there are some who to follow recommendations, all these things. So let's see how these things are happening. This is how your home feed is constructed. Half of the tweets that you see on your home feed is collected from the accounts that you follow. Um, so these are called in-network tweets. The other are called out-of-network tweets, right? You can see 15% comes from something called social graph and the rest comes from something called sim clusters. We are gonna now understand how each of these sources are collected and we are also going to understand the meaning of this social graph and sim clusters, all these words. So coming first to the in-network tweets, they have a pipeline to search and rank your in-network tweets. They do that using a search system or a search engine they created called Early Bird and that is based on Apache Lucin. I think uh, Elasticsearch is also based on that same engine. Lucin is an open source tech search engine um, and that is part of Apache. Early bird is not only used during recommendation generation but also when you search your tweets from the search bar. So early bird is the searching and ranking system for Twitter. I also saw in the code and I might be wrong here that uh, early bird is taking into account a tweet's score when building its index. Um, and that score is based on things like if your tweet is offensive or if it has a link to it and all these things. Not entirely sure how much effect this has, but I imagine this does affect your tweet's performance to some extent. This gets you the tweets, like this searches out the tweets for you. But now these tweets, this set of tweets have to be ranked and uh, this system is called light ranker. So to rank these tweets in order of your preference or relevance, a model called real graph is used, which predicts the likelihood of you interacting with a Twitter user or with a tweet from some Twitter user. The more the likelihood of your interacting with it, the higher the chances that it will be ranked upwards in your feed. Another signal that it uses is called tweepcred, which uses page rank, you know, the legendary algorithm that uh, gave birth to Google. Like this was the initial algorithm that Google used. I don't know how much they use it right now. Um, and it was used to find out how credible a page was. So that page was up your search rankings, right? Um, so using this, Twitter finds out the credibility of a Twitter user. So if a large account, let's say Elon Musk, likes your tweets, it is likely to be boosted. Now, according to the documentation, TweetCred still uses Hadoop and MapReduce to run itself. Also in this whole system, if your tweet is toxic or NSFW, it's ranked below. Okay, now that we are done with the in-network tweets, let's talk about the out-of-network tweets um, or the tweets from people that you don't follow. As I showed you before that there are two places that this feed is made up from the social graph and the sim clusters. So let's uh, take a look at the social graph first. 15% of all tweets in your timeline comes from this source, which is not very little actually. Um, the social graph puts tweets in your timeline, which are liked or positively interacted by the people you follow. You see, this is a graph data structure, right? That you are following someone and that person is following someone else. This is in a graph. And Twitter created this graph processing engine called graph jet which walks this graph and fetches all these details so again if people who are followed by a lot of people likes your tweet the chances of your tweet appearing in many people's timelines increases let's come to sim clusters now this is quite interesting it aims to find the tweets and the users you will be interested in First of all, let's try to understand the concept of embeddings in simple words. This will probably not be a very accurate or a very in-depth or very nuanced uh, description of embeddings, but it is enough for understanding this uh, scenario. See, in machine learning, an entity needs to be converted into a vector or a numerical representation. Let's take a very easy example. How do you represent a location, right? 
you take the latitude, let's say x, and you take the longitude, let's say y, right? This vector represents your location. For this use case, you can think of a vector as an array of numbers where each number represents a value along a dimension. This might be a very dumb way to describe vectors, but well, let's go with this. For a location, there are only two dimensions, the latitude and the longitude. Similarly, if you need to express a point in a 3D space, there would be three dimensions, the length, breadth and height. You see, as the data starts getting more complex, the number of dimensions to describe that numerically increases. So let's say if you want to represent something like a Twitter user or like a tweet, it would require pretty long vectors because you need to have semantic information of that tweet. Like what does the tweet actually mean? All that needs to be encoded into a numerical representation. So those will be pretty long uh, vectors. And these vector representations are called embeddings. So if you have the embeddings of your Twitter user based on what you are interested in, and if there are embeddings of some other person based on what they post, and if these two vectors are very close to each other, um, we can say with some certainty that you will kind of like the tweets by that person. Um, obviously, what's going on internally at Twitter is much more complex. Um, this is just enough to get us started. Now, what they have done is they have divided Twitter into 145,000 communities. Um, each of these communities have an embedding and these are called the SIM clusters, right? So if Twitter has a SIM cluster embedding for your Twitter account, it can figure out which communities you will be a part of. It also figures out which Twitter user are known for or have good uh, quality tweets on that community. So now if you are part of that community, if another person is known for tweets uh, in that community, that you will be recommended tweets from that person, right? Also, each individual tweet can be associated with a community. The more people from a community likes that tweet, the more it would be recommended to others in that community, right? So this was a very, very basic example of SIM clusters. Like I recommend you to read through their algorithm. Actually, um, it will like the examples are pretty good. It will show you the how they create the matrices, how they do the cosine similarity between the matrices. Also, there is a service called CR Mixer, which prepares the final list of out of network tweets from these two sources. So it kind of mixes these two sources. So at this point, there are only 1500 tweets ready for you out of like millions and billions of tweets. So all these tweets are from the in-network and out-of-network sources, but now these needs to be ranked together, right? So it is ranked using a large neural network um, of 48 million parameters, and it takes in the tweets and orders them to optimize positive engagements for you. For example, like retweets and replies and likes and all these things, right? Um, I don't think they have given details of how exactly these models are or um, they have shared weights for this model. So I really don't know uh, much in depth here. Also, I'm not a machine learning guy, so please don't expect good uh, machine learning advice from me. Now the tweets are almost ready. It just needs some final garnishing on it. For example, it needs some filters, like it removes the tweets from the people you blocked or muted, or it prevents too many tweets from a single person. Like you will not like to wake up one day and see your whole feed filled with Elon Musk tweets. You will go crazy, right? Then it removes tweets which are too far away in the social graph. For example, it's from some person C, which is followed by some person B, which is followed by some person A, and then you follow that person A, right? If there is such a long chain to that user C, user C's tweets will be removed. Um, now you can take a look here for the list of all these transformations. This is just a list which I um, screenshotted from the blog itself, which Twitter released. So I think much interesting here, but you can take a look at this list and and in the code how this works. Now the tweets in your feed are ready, but it needs some ads, some follow recommendations merged into it, right? So this follow recommendation is also generated based on the data of GraphJet, RealGraph and SimClusters, which I've uh, explained earlier, right? And all this thing run only in 1.5 seconds and it runs 
five billion times a day. So this is pretty crazy engineering. Engineers at Twitter um, did pretty good jobs, it seems. So this was kind of an overview. I intend to go in more depth of these components in later videos and talk about engineering complexities in each of them. Also, I'll try to figure out how exactly each tweet is dampened or boosted. I saw some code around it, but I'm yet to figure out how it factors in which part of the pipeline to understand it better. Um, maybe you can use the comment box to discuss and you can educate me on how these things work actually. Um, I would be also glad to participate in, in those discussions in the comments. So if you want to see on these topics, uh, you need to subscribe and do leave a like on this uh, video if you liked it. Also leave a like if you didn't like it, like just for my happiness, right? See you in the next video. Bye.